Yes, this color choice is disgusting, but you can customize this any way you want and have a variety of different triggers using just a couple of plugins. First one is Highlighter, which when you highlight a word, you can right click, click on Highlight, and then add a highlight of your choice, which you can customize. Lovely. And the second one is supercharged links. So if, for example, I create a new note in this folder, it is using the same formatting because I've used a path to identify this uh, lovely formatting. And then the third one is style settings, which is actually used in loads of other plugins as well, but we're going to stick to just these three for now. First up, we have Highlighter. Now, there are two different ways you can apply this, either CSS classes or inline styles. I personally choose CSS classes because it gives me more flexibility, but it does mean that if you move devices or change things to devices, the style settings can get lost. You can then change the highlighting style. You can see some examples down here. I'm going to leave this to none. And all of these colors are default, but if you want to add your own colors, you can name the color, then go into the color picker and select any color that you want. I happen to know the hex code of my color because I use it in thumbnails all the time. Now down the bottom of the list, you've got my color and I can delete it if I want. But now when I come to my page, I can highlight something, right click, go to highlight. And now by moving up and down with my mouse, it scrolls up and down the list and I can go down to my orange. And now I've got my orange highlight. Next up, we have the supercharged links, and this is what I use the majority of the time inside of my own personal vault. I'm going to remove this selector because it looks disgusting. And you can alter the settings as to where the aesthetics show. I personally keep them all the same because I like to keep it the same, doesn't matter where I'm looking in Obsidian. Then when you add a new selector, there are three main options. You have attribute value, which is essentially the YAML, the metadata, the front matter, the bit at the top of the pages. You can select that, a tag, or a note path inside the note path, that's the path that you want to be colored. So in this case, I have a notes folder you can see up here. So when I type notes, it's going to select all of the files inside of the notes folder. That's the path. I can customize the matching type to exact match. So it has to be in the notes folder, which yes, contains value within white space separated words starts with this value or ends with this value. Now these bottom three from my experience are mainly for tags rather than the path, but it's still there. Then to check it's doing what you want it to do, if you have a look at the results, you can see the path of the note contains notes. If I change this to exact value, the path of the note is notes. So in this case, I want it to be contains notes. I'm not fussed about case sensitivity because again, we're using a notes path. Unless you've got folders that are the same name, why you'd have that, I don't know, but I just leave that off. And you can disable these style options, which we'll go to in a second, but I would keep them all on because if you don't want to use them, just don't use them. So we're going to push save and it's automatically added a color. Now that's a disgusting color, but it's a color nonetheless. Now I want to add a tag. We get a similar menu option, but in this case, I just need to type in the tag. I don't need the hash. I don't have a tag at the moment in this vault. So I'm just going to put tag and then make the tag. And you can see down in the results, note has hashtag tag. Save and now it's giving it a green. Now with the attribute value, you actually need to tell the plugin what values you want it to look for because this drop down list at the moment is completely empty. Now I'm going to go to the target attributes for styling. I'm going to add date. I don't actually have a file with date in, but I can add that in. Now when I create a selector, the attributes value, this is the default because there's only one option. If I was to add a comma and then something else, so a done tick box. Now in the attributes, I have date or done. So we'll put done because why not? Attribute value. So this is going to match to the attribute value what the answer is. So inside the date, you could put a specific date in there. Inside done, I'm just going to put true because it's a boolean. So true or false. We're then given the matching type options. Now for this one, I'm going to put exact match because I want it to be true. So if it's a capital T, it won't work. We then get the matching styles options again. I'm going to use exact match. Now I'm actually going to put this one on because if it's a capital T, I don't want it to work because I want to use this with another plugin. I'm going to keep all of these on and then we can just double check the results. So note has attribute done with the value true and it's given it a nice pink. Now, when you go to the style settings plugin, it's reading the supercharged links. So just for reference, if we go to the appearance tab, scroll all the way down, there is now a CSS snippet or supercharged links. If we turn that off, you can see the colors have gone. If we turn that on, the colors have come back on. So what the supercharged links plugin is doing is creating a CSS snippet. Then the style settings plugin is reading the CSS snippet and going, hey, you've got these things. Do you want to change them? And this is where I can come in and put some really nice colors or really disgusting colors. So let's put a, a pastel green in there. We can change the font weight. So essentially, is it bold or is it not? So you can have bold, bolder, normal, lighter, and initials. So we'll make this one bold. 
You can add some decoration, so put underline, overline, line through. I'm just going to keep it as normal because I don't want any more of those lines. Prepend text is adding something to every single thing that matches this. It's going to add something before it. And because this is a note, I'm going to put a piece of paper. And just for aesthetics, I want to put a space. So there's the emoji, space, then the file name. And the append is the other end. So if I put an emoji pencil in there, you can now see you've got the note the name and then the pencil. And because this is at the end, I'm gonna put the space at the beginning. So now we have the spaces in between. Background color does exactly what it says. It adds a background color, that's nasty. Uh, and then we can change the background color to something else. This is going to be really nasty. I'm, I'm not a graphics designer. Yeah, I can't see that at all, but let's make it darker. Uh, is, is, is that any good? Yeah, that'll do. And you can go through and change all of these supercharged links, all of the different colors. And once you're settled, you can see your lovely colorful changes. If we then add that tag, so we go hash tag, we've now added the tag in the page. Then when we actually save it, you can see it's now gone to green because that's the supercharge link that we made. We go style settings, go into the tag, change that color to something else. Let's go red, save. Now you can see the file is red. Now something to note here is if we go hashtag tag and then bring that in, it's going to add the style settings of tag in there. So you can see it's changed red, but because the background color is turned off and the note, the untitled note is inside the notes folder, the background color is still being used from the notes folder settings. So what you may want to do is go in, use the background color and then add a background color if you're going to use them across the board, but that's just something you have to keep in mind. Now we've got some red writing and a white background. Doesn't look bad, but let's add an underline and let's actually make it bolder. So now we've got a bold underlined words. There we go. So adding some uh, settings in there. And then in this new note, if we add some YAML or front matter, I've now got the done attribute that it's looking for. And then when I put in true, you can see it's found. Oh, yep, it says true. Well, let's make it purple. Inside of my personal vault, you can see I've got some tags in here, I've got some paths, and then I do have an attribute in here as well. Now, some of the files have more than one of these. So for example, I can have a project that's a piece of content. Now, a project I want to target, but a project that's a content, I want to be a video. So it goes down in order, which means if it's got the project tag, it'll be taken there. But if it's also got the content tag, the target will be replaced by the video camera. And that's the same for the football note. So you can see the path for the football note, if this was higher up it would actually show the source rather than the football so it's down the bottom because that's the the last thing it's going to do this is a shorter video included in my online course where i go into more detail about workflows nuanced use cases and other applications that i use such as zotero and morgan and things like that and you can find all the information in the description below